The Milwaukee Bucks are 19 and 7, and we think they're a really, really good team. But it's been a weird schedule to start the season. And I think the next two weeks is going to tell us a lot more about the Milwaukee Bucks. So we're going to break down some of the opponents the Bucks are going to play and try and answer any lingering questions we have about this version of the Milwaukee Bucks. Let's get started. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Bucks. My name's Kane Pittman. You can see and hear me on this show Monday to Friday and also find my work over at ESPN. And back with me in the comfortable chair to my, <laughs> uh, I believe it's to my left, looking on the screen, is Camille Davis from the Technical Foul Podcast, but also this show uh, once a week. And we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or first watch of every single day. We really appreciate it, particularly on YouTube. We're so close to 5,000 subscribers, so please just subscribe if you haven't yet so I can stop talking about it. Uh, but we have a lot of fun. We're doing the live pods now. People are jumping in. Some Bucks fans are not panicking. Some Bucks fans are a little bit stressed, it appears like. So that's what we're going to talk about on today's show that's brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. All right, Camille, uh, the Bucks have had this uh, non-COVID illness that has been ripping through the camp and players have been missing games left, right, and center. And we want everyone to be healthy on the Milwaukee Bucks, but we want all, everyone to be healthy on locked on Bucks as well. So I'm just thankful that you're back with me today because you've been a bit under the weather as well. Uh, but you're looking healthy. You're sounding healthy. Hopefully you're not feeling too bad. Yeah, uh, I'm happy that my voice is back. There were a few days here where my husband kept calling me the Crip Keeper. He's, I don't know what's <laughs> going on exactly. So, um, yeah, it wasn't COVID. It wasn't flu. It wasn't RSV. So I don't know what the virus is. But if what I had is was also circulating around in the NBA with these guys, I can I can honestly see why they've been out for as long as they were, why Marjan took so much time out, because uh, I lost about two weeks <laughs> uh, of just being sick, which – was wild. Like I've had COVID and whatever I just had was worse than my COVID experience by far. Like I was pretty out of it. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to be back and talking bucks and being here. Like I've been gone for so long, live pods, everything now with locked on bucks. That was new. I was like, Oh, look, look what we're doing. We're moving up in the world here. So um, I'm happy to be back. I look forward to getting in on some of those live pods at some point as well. Yeah. When you start talking trash, that's what I know. Uh, we've really made it. But uh, you mentioned, obviously, Marjon has been out. And when you are ill, and I had a number of people yesterday in the live pod, why isn't Marjon Bochamp playing? Clearly, he has been ill. And as you are going through, Camille, it takes a little bit of time uh, to get your win back and and yeah, be firing on all cylinders. So if there's any rust that you need to shake off today, don't worry about it. It's fine. We're bringing you back up to speed here. But the Bucks play the Golden State Warriors. And we're going to jump into the upcoming schedule because... It's a bit of a gauntlet that the Bucks have got up until Christmas Day. I personally can't wait because you know the, the Houston Rockets game is fun, and I'm watching every single game. But I want to see the Bucks against the best, and we're going to find out a bit about this team in the next couple of weeks. But the injury report for this game against the Golden State Warriors, and I've got some bad news uh, because Drew Holiday is questionable with a non-COVID illness. It won't go away. It's been in the camp for the Bucks, so we'll see whether he plays. It says questionable, but. Based on what we've seen with some of the other players that have caught this illness, they've tended to miss a few games. So that would be a big blow. Hopefully Drew plays and Chris Middleton uh, is probable uh, with the ankle sprain he suffered, but didn't seem too worried about it. And for the Warriors, Andrew Wiggins is out. But other than that, they should be just about full strength for this game. So it's going to be really fun. Before we get into the upcoming schedule, are you the type of person that watched that Houston game and walked away concerned, walked away annoyed, completely forgot about it. Uh, how do you react to a loss like that? Because there's no way around it. It's not the end of the world, but it was a bad loss straight up. I think yeah. it's, it's, it's fine. That's the perfect way to describe it. It was a bad loss. Um, I would say the word I would use is annoyed uh, mm -hmm. was the word with that because from the gate, it kind of just felt like the energy wasn't right with the Bucks. Like you could tell that Houston was coming out and they were playing as hard as they could. They had the energy, they were running, they were hustling. And it was just kind of like the Bucks seemed like they were kind of sleepwalking throughout the game as if they could turn it on at any point and then, you know, smash these guys. But 
as Bobby said after the game, like you, you let teams hang around, they get that confidence. They feel like they feel good about their chances. They start making their shots and it looking at the stats is like, yeah, the bucks were missing a bunch of threes, but Houston didn't make that many threes either. Like they were killing us in the paint, which whenever that happens, I'm like, what's exactly happening here. And someone looked to Brooke and, you know, Brooke alone. It's like Brooke was still contesting a lot of these shots. Um, They were just dropping and, one thing with the scheme too now, especially with uh, a little bit less help, you got to have your guards keeping guys in front of them. Um, and people were getting, they would, like the pick and rolls, like they just couldn't get around the picks. They were just getting beat. So it was like, it was up to Brooke at the end, like just trying to stop all these floaters and guys attacking them. And Brooke held his own on a few occasions, but as we saw at the end of the game, like it just wasn't enough. And you hold a team under a hundred points. You think you can win that game, but when the Bucks only score more than thirteen points in the fourth quarter, like you're again, you're waiting for them to turn it on. Like, come on, let's get it together. But instead, it was a comedy of errors. It was turnovers. It was missed shots. It was just kind of like, what's what's happening? And I feel like Grayson missing that dunk was just kind of like this. This sums up everything um, that we've just been watching. So yeah, it was it was an annoying loss. Um, but again, it's a long season. 82 games. Some nights are going to be like that where the team just doesn't seem to come out with the energy that you would expect them to. Like they're not going to treat every game like a playoff game, but you would hope that they would be able to beat. I believe Houston has the worst record in the West. So those are the kind of games where you're like, should be a gimme here. Like we should, we should get this game. I expect us to win this game. I know for a fact how many Milwaukee people love to go to those Houston games and, and show out. So um, this mini away home game didn't pan out the way a lot of Bucks fans were hoping. So, yeah, frustration is a good word. And I generally don't get too frustrated with regular season games at this point because it's like I understand it's a long season. But this one was annoying. Um, this one in the Bulls loss where the two were just like, ah, I just don't feel good about these two. And I have to shout out the great man, uh, Frank Madden, who well, I'm, I'm assuming he's going to come back and podcast with us soon. It's uh, He's been away from the podcast just about as long as you, Camille. I've been doing all these solo pods and people are absolutely sick of just listening to me talk and looking at my silly head on the screen. So Frank has to come back soon as well. Uh, but I made a joke of Frank to Frank in a group message with a few other people a few weeks ago because the Bucks lost the game, and it might have been the Bulls game, uh, and the Celtics lost on the same night. And Frank said, you know, I'm just annoyed that the Bucks didn't pick up that game in the standings on the Boston Celtics. And I was like, well, it's all right, Frank. There's only 63 games to make it up. And, you know, and we are 19-7, and seven, the Bucks, so 26 games into an 82-game schedule. They have 56 damn regular season games to play. There is a lot of te- time left in this season. But I must admit, it, uh, even yesterday, I was just like, geez, it would have been nice to capitalize yeah. on the Celtics, obviously losing to the Warriors uh, the day before there. And uh, I said that this might be the worst loss of the season. There might be worse ones. I mean, they're going to have nights like this uh, throughout the season. And I think part of it is that we're in year five now of the Bucks being a dominant regular season team. And if you look at teams like the Boston Celtics that haven't won anything with this group, they're still motivated because they haven't got there. They haven't got to the to the top. They obviously had to step back in the finals last year. You've got young teams like Memphis and New Orleans. We'll get into them. But they're the same thing. They're motivated. We're seeing the Warriors. They're having an up and down regular season. And I think the longer you do it, it doesn't mean that the fans have to love it and they can be frustrated about a loss to, to Houston. But just in general, history tells us that there are more fluctuations and, I guess, uh, struggles for motivation or perhaps just straight up complacency thinking that as you pointed to Camille, it did look at times like the Bucks just thought like these little exuberant kids on this team, we are eventually going to push them to the side and just win this game. And halfway through the fourth quarter, they were up by six points. Bobby Portis pointed to it after the game. He said, we had a lead. We needed to squash it right there. They didn't do it. You give young players uh, some energy and some motivation and they will come back and they'll beat you. And that's what happened to the Bucks in this game. So let's get to the schedule that we've got coming up over the next few games because, honestly, as I said, I think we're going to learn a lot about this Bucks team. But before we do that, let's talk about Prize Picks, the sponsors of today's show. And if you aren't aware of how Prize Picks works, you just pick two to six players and they uh, will either score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, and you can win up to twenty five times on your uh, twenty five times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Uh, and there's all sports, so it doesn't have to be NBA. It can be baseball, 
It's not baseball season, Camille, but it can be baseball at some point in time. Uh, hockey, football, uh, college sports, they're starting to get into full swing. So anything that you can think of, so download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. And if you deposit 100, uh, Prize Picks will give you 100. If you deposit 50, they'll give you 50. You know the drill. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to 100 bucks. Uh, that's at prizepicks.com. Uh, also, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. They'll have you covered with all the news. I wonder today if they were talking about uh, Tom Brady, Camille. Did did he lose like 150 to zero or something yesterday? <laughs> what, what was the final score in that game? I thought I was looking at a meme. <laughs> I can't recall what the final score was. I saw they were losing, and I was just kind of like, oh, okay. And I just kind of went about my day. Uh, the only thing that I saw from that game was this image of Tom Brady looking like he's getting ready to get choke slammed. Um, by a defender, which was like, okay, this guy's probably going to be fine out of his mind for touching Tom Brady this way. So, um, yeah, not going good in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, whatever they want to call it. Tampa Bay. Uh, well, my name's Kane, Camille, and I know that you're a wrestling fan, so I am uh, partial to choke slams from time to time. So <laughs> I'm not against that maneuver. Uh, you also have a Brewers uh, top on there, and the Brewers made a trade today. So I'm sure that there are some Milwaukee Brewers fans that are excited. Maybe they talk about that on Locked On Sports today. But anyway, go listen to that podcast. Bucks and Warriors. Uh, so this is interesting. And sometimes I get confused in my own head. And I still think the Bucks are the defending champions, Camille. In my head, they're still the defending champs. But they play the actual defending champs tomorrow. And that is the start of a gauntlet schedule for this Milwaukee team. So they get the Warriors at home. Then they travel to Memphis. Then they have the Utah Jazz at home, who, by the way, the Jazz keep on just hanging around. Mm -hmm. Then they've got the New Orleans Pelicans, number one in the West. Then they've got the Cleveland Cavaliers, who now hold the league's number one defense. They've, they've topped the Bucks there. Then they get the Brooklyn Nets, who are playing far better basketball. Mm -hmm. And then they wrap up this portion of the schedule with a nice little Christmas Day showdown with the Boston Celtics, who are first in the East, and uh, number one in offense. So uh, the Bucs aren't going to win all these games. Oh, I hope they do. That would be incredible stuff. But we're in for some seriously competitive basketball. Do you think the Bucs are really good, Camille? Hmm. I do think the Bucs are, are good, and I could get why someone could ask that question. I'm sure there's going to be some people who have a knee-jerk reaction to that even being asked. What do you mean? Of course the Bucs are good. Yeah. But it's interesting when you like look at their schedule. Like The Bucs have played a very home-heavy schedule um, early. They've played – well, I mean, we have a lot more parity in the league where mm. you know teams are better than they were before. But, I mean, they played Detroit twice already. Uh, they played Oklahoma City twice. Um, they've played San Antonio. So there are some of those, although they lost to San Antonio in San Antonio. So there is that, but you know, it, it's one of those schedules where you're like, okay, these are, it's a home heavy schedule here to start. Um, not necessarily the top guy, like top teams in the league that we're seeing come through. And as you mentioned, their upcoming schedule is, is brutal. And in part too, because a lot of those games are going to be on the road. Like, yes, we have Golden State at home, but then they're flying to Memphis, and then they're coming back home for another one-game stint against Utah, and then the next five are on the road: New Orleans, Cleveland, Brooklyn, Boston, Chicago. Like it's it's going to be a challenge here. Um, and one thing I'll say about the schedule: uh, I'm thankful that some of those "quote unquote" easier games were able to take place while you know the Bucks were going through some injury misfortunes. Chris Middleton's working himself back; he's still working himself back. Him and Pat still seem like they have some rust. Um, a little bit on them from their time off. So you would hope that they can start rounding in the form as some of these games get more competitive as we head into December, because there are a subset of NBA fans who say, you know, the league doesn't really start until we get to Christmas. So once Christmas comes and people really start paying attention to the NBA, a lot of takes start coming. So uh, it's nice the Bucks were able to bank some of those early wins, given that their schedule was as home heavy as it was. I say it often, try to win your home games split those games on the road and split with the good teams and you're going to be in pretty good shape. So I'm hopeful, like you mentioned, I would love for the Bucks to win all these games. 
Um, but I'm not sure how realistic that's going to be. I mean, the Warriors have been up and down in large part because they're trying to incorporate their young guys into the system right. and lost some of their vets from last year. Um, so seeing how they're able to do that, but we all know what Steph Curry can do. Steph Curry himself has been uh, like the, the flotation device, keeping the Warriors going right now while they're still figuring out how these new rotations are going to work and how these roles are going to work and players getting used to their roles. Um, so that's going to be really fun to see. Memphis hasn't been healthy in, I don't know how long at this point, but it doesn't seem to matter who they throw out there. You know you're going to get a competitive game, especially being in Memphis. You mentioned Utah already. That's a team that's going to play every night. Uh, It's just a team that plays good basketball together. If Mike Conley's back and healthy, they they have another dimension to them. So, like, that's not a game that you can just say, like, yeah, we should – that's a guaranteed win here. New Orleans is top in the West right now. Um, they're playing some really good basketball. You've mentioned Cleveland. The Bucks have beat Cleveland. I believe it's been twice already so far this season, but uh, Cleveland's really good at home, and it's not a game that you can take lightly. We know Donovan Mitchell can pop off at any time. Um, Garland's really good. Like They just have a really good team. So Brooklyn's been playing so much better over the last 10 games here, and then you accumulate all that with Boston on Christmas. Christmas Day against Boston, the very first time that we're able to see Boston. I would hope at that time, you know, it's the the one and two seed in the East going at it head to head. But uh, we'll see how these next games play out. But that's that's a gauntlet. It is. And the thing that stands out to me is we've praised the defense. We've praised some of the challenges that they've made. And it hasn't always been perfect. They've had some nights where it hasn't been uh, exactly ideal. But for the most part, it's been awesome. We think that Brook Lopez is a defensive player of the year, front runner at this point in time. Drew's had some spectacular moments as well. But when you talk about these teams, they've got Boston ranked number one in offense, Utah number four, which, you know, go figure. eh? There's a bunch of vets that are just playing really hard. Uh, I, on live TV, said that the Utah Jazz are going to have the worst record in the entire NBA this year at the start of the season. Now, part of that was because I figured that they were just going to sell off all these vets. It hasn't happened, and they keep winning, so maybe they won't do it. But Utah are the fourth-ranked offense. The New Orleans Pelicans are the fifth-ranked offense, but I think that that, that's still climbing. Zion's played 20 games out of the 26. He's a beast. Yeah. Then you've got the Brooklyn Net, uh, sorry, Golden State Warriors, eighth ranked offense, Brooklyn Nets, ninth ranked offense, and then the Memphis Grizzlies at 10, and Cleveland are actually 12. So out of all these six games that they've got coming up, top 12 offenses. So I said the Bucs have already slipped now to the second ranked offense behind Cleveland, by the way, another team that they're playing. So we know the Bucs offense is down, it's ranked 18th right now. So they better find a way to score because as good as the defense is, It's going to be challenged like it just simply hasn't been challenged so far this regular season, and it's going to come pretty quickly. Yeah, that's a fact. You said second-ranked defense, 18th-ranked offense. Like, we're used to seeing the Bucs kind of, you know, being top 15 in both, top 10 in both of those areas. So, again, like, we've seen Chris, and he's working himself back into shape. Like, his first game back against the Lakers, it was kind of like, okay, Chris, like, you came in with a good rhythm. Like, it's really good to see that. And since then, you can tell he's really just trying to find that rhythm. Um, I can't remember what game it was. It was a recent game that we had, and the Bucs were up big. Um, I think it was against Sacramento, possibly. Um, And they just kind of let Chris run with the bench unit and just kind of get some shots up. And I was really happy to see that. Like, yeah, let him him figure this out. Let him work his way back into game shape, get that rhythm back. Pat Connaughton, again, he's been missing a lot of open threes. Grayson's had a couple games, too, recently where it's like we need a little bit more out of you with the looks that you're getting. So uh, we kept saying, you know, when Chris Middleton gets back, the offense should improve because he's able to bring that shot creation. He's also able to play make for the team. Uh, But at this moment, we haven't been able to see that all come together yet, in part because, I mean, Chris went out (laughs) against Houston, um, and he's also trying to figure out his way back to get that shot down. So it hasn't been as pretty or as seamless as some might have thought it could be when he comes back. So you would hope that now with the competition levels peaking up, um, that the Bucs can also step their game up and and get ready for the challenges that that are coming. And uh, we'll talk more about Chris Milton coming up next because I thought we saw some stuff in the Dallas game that was encouraging on both ends of the floor Clearly, his continuity has been broken up a little bit here. So more on Chris Middleton to come after we talk about Bet Online, which is the number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from 
uh, pro football, uh, college bowl season. By the way, I, I just do not understand what college bowls are. Every team, whether they're just shitty, they're in a bowl game for some reason. It doesn't even seem like it means anything anymore. But anyway, college bowl season, go to betonline.net and you'll be able to find out all about it. Uh, basketball, the World Cup's still going as well. Commiserations to our friends from England. But all that is at betonline.net. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. Did you get involved in uh, USA World Cup fever, Camille? I wouldn't say that I had a fever. Um, my interest. Well, you, was a- you actually did have a fever at the time. <laughs> very, very true. I was very yes. out of it. Um, but no, I, I was going to like I'm going to watch USA in the World Cup. I'm not a big soccer fan, football fan, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Um, just not necessarily my cup of tea. But I do find the World Cup to be exciting when the USA like it's just something about it. Like the games are too stressful. First of all. For me to be a soccer fan all the time like hmm. when i was younger i thought like oh zero zero this is so boring but when you're watching it it's like any play here could change the complete outcome of the game you're like one goal can change it all um so i definitely did watch i enjoyed the usa run um young team seems like they were going to be poised to do a little bit more going forward and again i say this as somebody who doesn't really watch much soccer but uh what i do know about the usa national men's team is that uh it's like a new age, a new a new dawning of an era. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they're able to grow. That's right. And the Women's World Cup is in Australia next year. So come, you know, it's it's like watching the USA in basketball. There's no excitement for you people over there. You, you're really good at, at the women's game. So come out to Australia and jump on the bandwagon of a winner. Yeah, we, know that, that we know that's what you guys like to do. So uh, come out to Australia. <laughs> Visit Australia. I'll be out here. It's going to be a beautiful time. Uh, Chris Milton being back with the Bucks is a beautiful time, uh, Camille. Although, again, he did have this ankle tweak against Houston, which is unfortunate. I saw a bunch of people jumping into YouTube comments suggesting that, well, this is it. This is the beginning of the end. Do you have any concerns about that? I laughed at it. I made a joke about it. Are you concerned about that? No, and people who know me know I'm a – Chris Middleton apologist. Like I'm a big Chris Middleton fan. Um, For years on Twitter, I had the arguments and I finally, by the way, Camille, you don't have to say that you're a Chris Middleton apologist because the guy is just really damn good at basketball and the people on the other side of the fence have been ridiculous for years. So I don't even think it's a Chris Middleton apologist. You're just the realist. Listen, I had it's uh you know how on the Simpsons Bart used to always write sentences on the the board. Right. I had to post one. It was just saying I will not argue with people about Chris Middleton being yeah, good at basketball. Right. And that's the point where I got to where it's like if you don't understand it after that finals run and you don't see what he brings to this team, I don't really know what much else I can tell you. But Exactly. In regards to this current situation, given his age, he's what 31 now, somewhere around there. Um, people are seeing them getting injured and it's kind of like, well, you know, we should, we should trade high, we should trade high. But again, I'm not sure who you could trade Chris Middleton for who can actually bring what he does to this team or be more of a plus to the team than what Chris is. Because again, Chris's playmaking, I feel like is underrated by many. Um, he just sees the court well. He helps set up guys. He just kind of brings a different um, control to the offense, which is something that this Bucks team needs because as much as I love Drew Holiday, Drew Holiday's not a floor general. He's not somebody who's every time going to be able to set up your offense. And the Bucks actually is a team of a couple of guys who are pretty good at making some plays and playmaking, and they just kind of lean on that group effort. So when you lose someone like Chris Middleton outside of his scoring ability, being one of the only guys on the team who can create his own shot, uh, like when you lose his playmaking as well, you're losing a big piece here. So I think it's premature. Talk about trading Chris Middleton. I would hope that the Bucks resign Chris Middleton when they get a chance to, given that his contract's coming to a close here. Um, but no, I'm I'm definitely pro keep Chris. Oh, of course. Uh, everyone should be in that boat. And we've discussed yeah, previously the contract stuff coming up. There'll be decisions for the Bucks to make uh, down the road. Chris has come out himself recently. I believe it was in the Journal Sentinel and said, hey, if it's up to me, I want to play for the Bucks forever. I don't think that really surprises anyone. Giannis has said before that it's going to be the saddest day of his basketball career, which makes me want to cry right now live on the podcast when, uh, when those two aren't playing together. And here's the point you make about being a facilitator. So there is 
always the noise that, well, Chris can't handle the ball. He's turnover prone. We've discussed, you know, Giannis and Drew can be prone to turnovers as well. I think overall, the Bucks can have games where they're a little bit sloppy uh, with the ball in hand. But so far for Chris Milton, you talk about rust potentially with shooting. I won't include the Houston game because it's just it's a pointless game to really look at. But Chris played four games with the Bucks since coming back. 23 assists and four turnovers. Yeah. I mean, he is, and Giannis is probably the best in terms of using his gravity to find guys in terms of true shot creation. But in terms of making the right pass or the right read a lot of the times and getting Giannis the ball with those lobs, which, by the way, they couldn't figure out how to throw lob passes in this Houston game. It was Chris Middleton, the one that straight away, it was so obvious when he was back in this offense that it's like, damn, the Bucs can just get some easy stuff uh, with Chris Middleton on the floor. And of course, he's a, he's a threat from the perimeter. So 23 assists and four turnovers is a pretty good rate uh, in my books, Camille. And the other thing I did want to acknowledge, and this is going all the way back to the Dallas game, but there was a couple of possessions and one possession in particular and people will say, well, it's one possession, Kane. Chill out. I get it. But he had some really good defensive moments yeah. on Luka Doncic in terms of actually just forcing the ball out of his hands, denying him the ball when Luka was trying to post him up. So I know where his defense is probably was better you know, six, seven years ago. That makes a lot of sense. He's taken on a bigger toll uh, offensively, but he's not a minus defender. Like he, he's, yeah. he's valuable in that situation with his size and length as well. Absolutely. And to your point, like, I think it was, it might have been a championship season when I was like, Chris, is he's starting to slip a little bit defense. Like, it's not mm. as sharp um, as it used to be, but that does not mean that he's bad at it. Like, he was probably, I would say, an above average defender. Um, and he's, you know, he's still a bit above average, but he's, it's just, it's not always as consistent. But it was very encouraging to see him against Luca. I believe that Eric in the athletic highlighted some of Chris's defensive efforts in that game. Oh, um, nice. I should read it. Sorry, Eric. I was like, if it wasn't Eric, I'm, I, I'm sorry. Someone did it, but I'm pretty sure it was Eric. Um, just highlighting Chris's defensive efforts, just forcing Luca to get the ball out of his hands. And some might say that Luca's an easier guard because he's, you know, he's slower or whatever, but Luca is not <laughs> easy to defend because his style is so herky jerky. Like he doesn't rely on his speed. He relies on angles and misdirection and intelligence. Um, so to be able to see Chris come out, use his length and make some stops and also his intelligence here, like at the end of that game, just being able to recognize the play that's getting ready to be run and all of that stuff that goes along with it. Like, yeah, Chris is a good defender. And especially when you put him in a system like the buck system where you have super great defenders behind him with Giannis and with Brooke, you have Drew at the point of attack. You have Javon Carter coming off the bench. You have Wes Matthews. You have all these guys who are known for their defense. And you plug in a guy like Chris, who's not a bad defender, might not be as good as it used to be. But when you plug him into a system like that, too, where you can just yeah. kind of use your IQ and be part of the system itself, be on that string working together, like he's a perfect fit for that. Yeah, and he's also one of those wings that the Bucs were short of uh, last year defensively against the Boston Celtics as much as we all point uh, to the offense there with the size that he does have, as you point to. All right, let's wrap this up. Uh, I'm excited for tomorrow, though. I get excited for these games. We don't see the Golden State Warriors too often, uh, but they've had some pretty good games yeah. over the course of the last uh, few seasons as well. So it'll be fine. Giannis and Steph, still the NBA Finals match. I think everyone wants to see, Please. but hey, they're going to challenge the Bucs with their three-point shooting. I'm fascinated to see how this game plays out. Hopefully Drew Holiday plays. Hopefully Chris Middleton plays. That would put a little bit of a dampener on it, but I'm sure plenty of our listeners are going to be a fire serve for them, and that's going to be very bloody fun, I would have to say. Uh, also, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast once you're done with Locked On Bucks, and make sure you're with us tomorrow night for a post-game podcast as well. Uh, it's going to be uh, good stuff, and hopefully Happy Frank, if he wants the podcast, who knows? Maybe he's maybe he's, maybe he's he's quit, and he just hasn't told me. From you. <laughs> he did a quiet quitting. He might have. He's been. He's done. He's like. I've done about fifteen hundred pods. I'm out of here. <laughs> hey, it was good to ca- hang out with you. Uh, it's been a while. I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better. Please look after yourself. Absolutely. I'm still getting my rest in, so I haven't been like as active with certain things as I wanted to be. Like even this weekend, slate of games. Like I was watching them, but um, half of it I had like a headache, and I'm just trying to get back to myself. So. Uh, my Twitter hasn't been Twittering like it used to, but mm. uh, as I continue getting better, I'll definitely be back on the on, on the tweets. 
Well, uh, Justin Garcia always talks about uh, rest versus rust. Uh, you got your rest and you had no rust in the podcast either, Camille. You're oh, a star. Thanks. We look forward to chatting to you next time. Uh, join us tomorrow, post-game pod, Bucks and Warriors.